So just a, a, a brief reminder that this is the preliminary design. So if there are specific things that you want to bring to our attention or point out, um, when this moves into final design and there's funding to do that, um, those can start to be incorporated or addressed at that time. So this is, we're very clear, this is preliminary design. Um, it is really, you know, what, what will go on when, when it gets to the funding point where we can take it into final design, but there's still opportunity to provide input on this. So um, this is in no way a final design. And to that point also, we have comment sheets. So if you have any specific comments, you want to make sure that we remember um, please feel free to fill out a comment sheet and there's a box in the back you can um, provide us any comments you have, what you like, what you don't like. So um, with that, uh, we're open for questions. Any questions? Yes? What is it estimated that this will be constructed? So, um, so this so right boulevard, this stretch of Brighton Boulevard is anticipated to be part of phase two of the overall uh, build out of National Western Center. So we're still working on the when phase two is gonna go. It's, it's probably 2018 or 2019, if I were to put ballpark. But right now we have, we, we're just launching now all of kind of the preliminary work that we have to do on the overall campus, which is we have a lot of environmental, that we've got to, we have to figure out environmentally what the, uh, how contaminated campus is or is not. Uh, we have a lot of uh, land to acquire, so we have land acquisition program to undertake. We have rail consolidation that we have to go through, kind of combining, taking the three runs of track that run through National Western, and combining them down to two runs of track. And then we have overall civil design for the overall campus. I mean, this is, this is an area that has not seen significant or, or material civil improvements, improvements to the overall infrastructure dry and wet utilities um, in 100 years, frankly. So we're, we're starting from scratch with the overall campus in designing a whole new infrastructure for the 270 acre campus, which includes Brighton Boulevard. So we have all of that work to do that we're starting now. And then we launch phase one of the build out, which, really is, which is starting with the stockyards, and then phase two, Brighton Boulevard is rolled into that. So it's a long answer to say we don't know yet if I had to ballpark it be 2018, 20. Yes, I So this, so 46th year? Okay, so, so I think what you're, are you, so are you talking, so we've got three connections over to Washington Street. Yeah, so here's Washington Street there. This is the existing 46th Street. So from Washington, for, well, 40, 47th is over, would be over here. You're talking about for the new 49th connection? Here, come on up and point. <laughs> it is confusing, and there's some conversation about preserving it. So this is where it's done. Uh, oh, so this, this is 40, yeah, so this is 47. Okay, 47, come, changes into 46, right. turns back into 47. Or yeah, wait, so this, this is 44. I-70 comes through okay. here. But 47th, isn't this 47th and Brighton right now? Yeah, 47th and Brighton. Okay, I'm confused here. But at any rate, the, uh, and then Illyria Library is up. Oh, I'm sorry, 47, okay. So here you come from Globeville over like this. You, you dog leg it here mm -hmm. if you want, and you go to the library there. So there, there's a lot of conversation about preserving this connection between Globeville and Elyria. Yeah. So how is that scoped in this, and where so does that all come in? Yeah, so that's not scoped at all in in this, the design of Brighton Boulevard. So 46th Street, this, so 46th Street will be preserved. 46th Street 46, is not going anywhere. It's included. And, this is the master plan. And the 47th coming from that's not changing at all. Okay, cool. We're not we're not at all addressing 46th Street in this part of the design. That's that's down the line. We're not there yet. Yes, sir. Is this dive like there on 47th? 
I have no idea. What? What's oh, the is that that must be a neighborhood one. Leo, I'm going to channel Leo for a second, because um, Leo had a question um, when we met with him a, a few weeks ago, which is, who's going to maintain this? Um, because I know um, what we learned from our conversation with Leo was CDOT came in when they built the viaduct 15 years ago, or updated the viaduct to the west of Brighton Boulevard, and they promised all these planters, and they, they promised all these improvements, specifically at the Brighton Boulevard I-70 interchange, and they put in the planters and then never put anything in them. So, this section of Brighton Boulevard, we're, we're still in the process of figuring out the entity type that is going to be overseeing the National Western Complex, um, the National Western Center as a whole. But this section of Brighton Boulevard is within the boundaries of the National Western Center, which means that whatever authority that we create that governs the National Western Center, that is responsible for the operations and maintenance of the National Western Center, will be responsible for this section of Brighton Boulevard. So all the improvements that you see will be, will be, incorporated, into, will be incorporated into that authority um, and will be under the governance of, of that authority to oversee. So the planters, the trees, and all of that will be, will be maintained, will be operated and maintained under that authority. So it won't be a maintenance, uh, an improvement district. It'll be the responsibility of the Coliseum and the the National Western Facility. So what that authority is, whether that authority includes a maintenance improvement district, I don't know. Yet. Okay. So I can't answer that. <laughs> but it's a good question. Leo. Yeah. Yeah, so so as part of the ballot initiative, so this is gonna be this is a lot of this is gonna be funded by the ballot initiative that, that you'll see on the on the ballot in November, which is essentially an extension of lodger's tax and um, the approval for the city to bond against that lodger's tax. Part of that bonding capacity, part of that money that, that we intend to bond against that lodger's tax is to pay for ongoing operations and maintenance of the complex. So what you're talking specifically is about is between two and ten million dollars of the of the revenue stream from that um, lodger's tax will be used for the operations and maintenance of National Western Center, which includes Brighton Boulevard. Well, 10 is a great number. So when they reach it, you're still going to be Call all of your out-of-town friends and relatives to fly here and rent cars and stay in hotels, and that means we'll get more lodger tax. Is that old GPS side this is off the It's currently bonded. So that property is, it's one of the properties that we plan on acquiring from DPS. The, my extent of knowledge on it is that there is a Wells Fargo some, lien or something against that property. I don't know any details beyond that. We have, a, we have a team that is working on the real estate side, on the acquisition side, and we, they've started conversations with DPS, but I don't know any of the details about it. Um, not, what was the, question? the question was, do we have an estimated cost of the project? I don't think so. We haven't costed we're, it yet. We're in process now, but yeah. anyway, it hasn't been confirmed. We do yet, but I need to provide a price, uh, an estimate for the change in the size of the Yeah, so we don't have a price yet. So that's 2018. So phases one and two of the master plan build out are essentially everything to the west of the VN. So that is included in the build out of phases one and two. And the goal is, yes, to have that in place by 2018 by the time that's finished. So didn't you say that this project also aligns with phase two of the master plan build out? <coughs> 
That is the goal. This is this is a lot bigger of a project than that pedestrian bridge, and so I don't want to I don't want to promise something that I can't deliver. So that one's a lot easier for us to accomplish than this one. That is definitely the goal. Hopefully it aligns, but a lot of it will depend on you know the trajectory of our rail consolidation process, land acquisition process, you know how clean or dirty is the site. So um, which will absorb all of our money. So, so right now, the like, right station will be all done, and the right will is, I think it will have all the new roads out. Yeah, that is that. Yes, that is that. 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 That is but at this point in our scheduling process, there's there's so much that it depends on that I just I don't want to promise something I can't deliver. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, you had a question? Yeah, just wondering, you mentioned the real estate Yeah, so I can tell you where 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 do you have where's your property? We're like on for the forty six and high. Forty six and high. So you're over here. Yeah. In, yeah. And down a little bit. So the land acquisition is essentially the boundaries of land acquisition are Brighton Boulevard, with the exception of the DPS site, and there's a there's a property on the southwest corner of this of the DPS site that we that we hope to acquire. The boundaries are Bright Boulevard, Race Court, the River, and the Coliseum. So it's within that, within those boundaries that we, we intend on acquiring land. Um, outside of Brighton Boulevard, we have no land acquisition. Uh, I should say east of Brighton Boulevard, we have no land acquisition planned other than the DPS site. And important to note, I think Rick mentioned it, but just to make sure everyone understands, what we're talking about is a widened right of way. So we're looking at a Brighton Boulevard that is wider than the existing Brighton Boulevard. The intent is for that expansion to happen to the west and not to the east. So we're holding the curb line along the east side of Brighton Boulevard and purchasing land to the west, which is all within the within the National Western Center anyway. So you know how wide that road becomes, whether it's a 90-foot right of way or an 80-foot right of way, it just means that we're looking at 10 feet more or 10 feet less of land that we use for program with the National Western Center, um, but it's all within the same acquisition program. Yes, sir. I'm, a realtor. I'm just curious, what if the people that you're developing their, their land that you don't own yet, what if they don't want to sell anything? Well, we haven't, we're not developing anything yet, so we're, we're only in a planning. Right now, we're in planning phase, and we've already started conversations. We've already started reaching out to all the landowners okay. to, to open that dialogue. They've all received letters with phone numbers in it um, for my colleague, Katie Spritzer, who is who's kind of the point person for the land acquisition program. And for a lot of the large businesses that have properties up here, we've been in active conversations with them for, se with some, for several months. And the goal, from our perspective, as it relates to land acquisition, is 100% transparency, is to be completely transparent through this whole process. Um, because. We're, we're buying other people's answer my question. My question was, if someone doesn't want to sell to you, what are you going to do then? So take it. we have, so there's no taking because everything happens through acquisition. Um, if we have to, you know, I've been asked before, is, is eminent domain um, a tool that we, we would use? It's the last resort. It's a tool that, that, it's a tool in our tool chest that we don't necessarily want to use, but if folks don't want to move, then could potentially exercise eminent domain, but it's all within the context of providing fair market value for their property, providing for all relocation costs, all costs associated with the relocation, um, hardship associated with it. So the goal is in the process, which could be uncomfortable, to make everybody as whole as possible through that process. So, I mean, that's, that's the goal, that's the plan. Yes, sir. Um, so right now, the anticipated use is uh, a parking.
parking garage, a TOD parking garage, you know, to complement the light rail, commuter rail station across the street, and also to be used by the program, the program within the National Western Center. And we're going to be exploring other uses, you know, complementary retail, um, commercial that that could complement the community, complement the neighborhood, complement National Western. So you're with Studio Competitivo. Yeah, I am. Yes, yeah. we've met. I worked on the Coursefield parking garage. Oh. So yes, we've been okay. trying to think the whole time. Why are you look so Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm just trying to understand what the context is with the anticipated uses. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's kind of a multi-use. We haven't exactly figured out the program. No, we haven't figured out the program yet. And we're in, we're in close contact. We just had a meeting with uh, Tony Pickett. Sure. With Tony and with Aaron um, from ULC. Okay to kind of just introduce ourselves and, and kind of start the flow of dialogue between us because we definitely want to be working in concert. I think the, the conversation is that we don't want to be um, doubling. Right. But so we want to create that, you know. And we had exactly that conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How would you uh, value the GPS site when the acquisition happens? Um, I honestly don't. So, so um, just for clarification about tonight's meeting, it's Brighton Boulevard, and those questions are all interrelated. Um, but if um, there are no other specific Brighton Boulevard questions, I, I'm sure Eric can be cornered to talk yeah, about to the answer. Western, the whole Western complex yeah. uh, plans, because that's kind of outside what we're doing with the Brighton Boulevard plan. So, um, not to say that's not important, but I want to make sure that we get the Brighton questions answered first, and then, and if you want to corner I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about that, yeah. after, as much as, to, to the extent of my knowledge. Yes? This is more to help understand what you're doing than question. When you say this is 30% of the time, can you help us lay people understand? We hear this quite often. The main reason for this level of it's. But what right. is it specifically? What is the thirty percent of what? It's thirty percent of what would be the complete design construction documents. So what this means is it it has the layout. We we put this together so we can get a good handle on costs uh, instead of spending the engineering money to go to one hundred percent design before we know the cost. So it just develops helps us develop construction costs. Helps us accumulate the ideas from everybody uh, without having full construction plans and the costs associated with putting those together. So this this is a planning document. You know the the uh, some of the sketches you saw earlier were if, if we were to put a percentage, you know, engineers tend to do that. We like numbers, but now it would be like a ten or fifteen percent is what you saw initially. We'd go on a step beyond that, so we could get more accurate costs. So some of the things. Well, the, the, the infrastructure is in the design. We consider things like uh, stormwater. Uh, we did a, a traffic study to establish the lanes and where we needed traffic signals. So that was all part of this. It's got the it's got the background information into it. So it is a technical document. Yes. One question I want to ask is, why would the city tear down a perfectly good arena that was built? doesn't make much sense other than, you know, they're just trying to spend a bunch of money because that arena that's there already is in pretty good shape. That's the question I, I can't answer. It's more on the National Western side. How far is, the, like, from the curb gutter at 47th and Brighton Boulevard, how far is the street being moved over to the seven lane? Like, how far is it coming? It's, the street itself is being widened about, 14 feet plus the uh, cycle track. So the right of way widens 30 feet, and, most, and that is all on the west side. So about 30 feet for the For new right of way, yeah. New right of way and all the light of way. Does any of the, I guess it's 
that's the problem. And that's all south of 44. What are the forecasts of revenues from this as a result of building this? Because the city and the taxpayers are the ones that are building that. But I know that National Western is a C3201 nonprofit organization that doesn't pay taxes. So how much revenue is the city going to get as a result of doing all this expensive development? happy to talk through with you any of that after the meeting, uh, but right now, I think the path forward is specifically going to Boulevard, but I'm more than happy to talk to you a lot of the details of the process. Uh, that was, I think you should talk about it in a public forum, because for years, National Western hasn't done anything around here. They haven't made any improvements, and now all of a sudden they're getting, how, how many millions of dollars is this going to cost us as taxpayers? That's what I'm interested in. We have held and will continue to hold public meetings as it relates to National Western. And you're welcome to join. We have on a monthly basis. We have citizen advisory committee meetings in this room on a monthly basis, which are open to the public. And you're welcome to, to, to attend any one of those uh, to hear the details of what we're doing. Any other questions related to Brent Boulevard? Yes. I don't think that a parking goes down that far south. Parking is on the north of 47. Uh, south of 47W. The I-70 corridor project uh, incorporates through lanes coming up right there. And so once you get to 47W, a left turn lane, a center through lane, and a right turn lane that goes down. And there's an existing project. Let's, let's take a couple more questions and then we can talk individually. Erica is the project engineer and probably knows more about the design than anybody. And she can answer questions too. So just a question about stormwater monitors. These are not the ones that are called the PLDs and rain guards and stuff. Usually there's water you can grow in there. There's usually only certain things. And oftentimes they're not really attractive plants. Um, sometimes people Trees, trees will still be there. They'll be between the plants. We, we don't have planters all the way. The plan back here actually shows the tree location. So I'm just asking, like, you should want to make sure there's flowering growing and stuff. So what we're planning, what we're planning for there is a seed mix that has a, a rhizomatous 
rhizomatous plants that the roots tend to bust up the crust that you'll get in something like a PLD. And you're right that it's a process working with trying to figure out exactly what plants are going to do well there. But we've had some success with this mix. It's a lot of um, native grasses, and then we'll come back in with some more colorful um, perennials that can also work in that, in that situation. So a seed mix that gets established with its roots down in there, and then some other plant things on top of that. Barking There's all the barking we've known in Milton's world. Barking is so I'm wondering where you're going to put all the guests now. Uh, there's a parking garage proposed on the east side there between 48 and 49. Uh, that, that would be part is that of the square is? That would be part of the plan, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the planning for the National Western. How um, many flight size is that going to be? I, that's not part of the road redesign, so I, and I don't think they're at that point yet where they know that. So. Any other questions on Brighton Boulevard? And, you know, I'd like to have. Hopefully people have a chance to look a little bit more at this plant here, especially and kind of get an idea what's proposed. Yes, ma'am. You mean during the construction? After the construction, we did a traffic study to try to forecast the level of traffic after the I-70 project, and as, and as the area develops. And that's why that actually the parking lane uh, has the option of becoming a through lane during certain events. Um, it's not a daily thing by any means. It's going to be parking, but there is that option to make that a through lane for northbound if needed at certain and then the, uh, the signals are located so that they can help control that traffic. And we did add a, a right turn lane uh, going southbound at 47. So we did forecast the delays. We have the level of, level of service numbers that, or letters that go over the intersection. And so we have got a, an idea of the level of service that those intersections will to ask us questions, like I said, the team is here, had a chance to see most of us. Thank you.